And welcome back to When Survival Looks Like Success. I always say hello weird. Like, hello! <laughs> hello! Hello! Hello, mate. I had that problem last year with my producer. Um, he was like, mm. you need to read you the way you say hello. <laughs> <laughs> and I did it. He was like, listen here. Yeah, read I did Elizabeth, it. knock it off. Hello! <laughs> hello! Um, Talk of the morning <laughs> to you. <laughs> Oh, God. People listening to that episode are going to be like, unsubscribe. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> we're like just... Rest in peace. Just it's been a long day. It's fine. Yep. So, I'm your host, Jessica. And today we're doing a really special episode about a topic I get asked all the time about. And that is friendships. Today's episode is called, How to Make Friends as an Adult and How to Let Them Go. <laughs> Boop! This is the one, y'all. <laughs> this is the one. Joining me today is the model, entrepreneur, photographer, guest, and all around pretty decent guy, Jacob from Cracklands Media. Hola again. <laughs> so, in my lifetime, I will say that the friendships I have experienced have been absent, overwhelming, intoxicating, painful, yeah, toxic, nonchalant, fleeting, fun, and plentiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have had amazing, amazing friendships, but I have had a lot of that category. I'm, I'm grateful as an adult that I have all these different friendships that kind of fill a role and a purpose. Like, I feel like now as an adult, I don't have just like that one friend anymore that you're like pinning your whole life on. Now it's like I have friends in different roles. I have business friends. I have tell all your deep, like deep, dark secret friends. I have friends I call about health or friends I want to do activities with, right? And so I've had so many women, especially women, so I'll be interested to get your perspective on this. But they've asked me in the last handful of years how to make friends as an, as an adult, because as an adult, you get a career, a relationship, a kid, or any other major responsibility. So now your dynamic changes. That friendship dynamic is totally different, and it can be really hard to endure. So what are your thoughts on all that? So what do you want me to say? Like how to make friends first? I feel like... like how to, how to, or which parts to start first? There's a so lot. in when survival looks like success, I feel like there's a lot of sighing, yeah. and you just did the two. It's just <laughs> when you know it's like a heavy topic, and you're like... <laughs> so Cause like especially because like just us personally this is what we literally were talking about this before the podcast like you know we've been on so many shows where that yeah. we thought we had friends as of recent clearly i'm not and we don't do names that's not us but like we we ran in the same so you know situation so um I'll start with, I guess, the, because making friends, obviously, when I give my perspective on that, I think that's the easiest thing, believe it or not. I think it's very simple I to make too. friends. No lie. Everybody wants this secret. I think it's easy. I'm going to get to that after. I think the hardest thing for people is cutting off, like, toxic friendships. Yeah. And it's it's not even just, like, a, just friendships. It's your friends, family, whatever it might mm -hmm. be. Um fucking i don't know a, a habit it's it's a it's a cutting something off and it's it's usually that part that is so detrimental to people because like you said there's these there's so many people that come in for a little bit and i always refer back to a statement that was literally told to me when i was like i think i was 17 at the time i had a sub a long-term substitute teacher tell me you got three people in your life you're gonna have people that come to your life for a reason a season and then you're gonna have those a couple of lifetime people and and that reason is it, uh, the reason is it kind of sounds similar to season but the reason is it, it, there's not a lifetime of them you know they're, yeah. they're not going to be there for a lifetime they serve a function they serve a purpose yeah they serve but there's not like a, a lesson there's yeah. not like a set time frame for them you no. know what i mean like these are people that could either be there for two two months teach a lesson or they could be there for 10 years before they teach you a lesson yeah. then you got those seasoned people which um i found seasoned people that kind of be like those people that not like super deep impact but like always a very positive impact nobody that you're ever like nah fuck that guy or leave her alone or you know it's, it's somebody that you see in public you say hi you shake your clothes, or you do you know a project I mean? together yeah and you spend a lot of time together and then maybe you don't see them anymore. yeah and then you yeah. like i mean you, you might share stuff on social media but like you guys don't collaborate much after that or something you know there's there's a lot of those um and i think people 
don't know how to decipher when they have a reason to season and yeah. a, a lot of people just think everybody's lifetime and you have to be stuck with people like I gotta cut off so many friends in the last year and obviously you know that's why we're talking about it um I'd say start there um and that 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 comes with knowing yourself and, and how to do that it's knowing what your boundaries are what you're comfortable with you know what your purpose is what your future is you you got to take into consideration all that stuff I'm not saying just Anybody that has one flaw that doesn't fit in with every one of your future plans is like, hit the highway. You know what I mean? You want to you wanna decipher every aspect. You know, everybody's going to have a couple of flaws in them. I'm not saying go well, out and look at people's flaws. I'm saying if you were to sit in a room with them, could they align with your purpose? Could they help you in the long run um, on a personal level as in a friend, not as a somebody? Yeah, can they make me money? Can, but do they believe in me enough to support my vision, at least support what I do by showing up or sharing, you know, whatever it might be. Um, so start there. In terms of making friends, it's simple. Stop being scared to be yourself. Everybody's so caught up, and yeah. we laugh about this so often. Stop being everybody else, guys. I'm looking at the cameras for this one because it's uh, it's visual. <laughs> guys, quit trying to be other people. Yeah. I, I, I tell you this so much. You know, being in the fashion industry, us being in the model industry, like the first day Jess met me, I walked in in a fucking pink jacket, no socks on, with some loafers and some flood pants. Like, I looked goofy that day. I was I was wearing no pants and my dad's <laughs> I, shirt. No lie, she was. My dad's butt down <laughs> shirt and no pants. And I remember everyone just kind of looking at me, I'm like, with my thick ass thighs, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> We got it. Look at this back girl tattoo. And like, so I say that. <laughs> it's that simple. Like, come into a room yeah. and just, just present it. your purest self, you know. Uh, and, and like she said uh, earlier, um, you guys will hear on the other episode, uh, being transparent is not a bad thing. You know, it, you don't always have to meet friends by being happy or acting no. happy-go-lucky. Like, if you're at a networking event and you're just... You might not be having the greatest time or something, and somebody asks you. You don't have to sit there. I'm loving it. Like, eh, I kind of wish I'd have stayed home. Like, be honest with people. It, it, it opens you up. It connects to people more. And I genuinely, I promise you, like, I've, I've learned a lot about humans the last couple of years. And that's the one thing I learned is just that simple love. Hey, if somebody asks you how you're doing and you're, you're not doing good, don't say, I'm good. How about you? Because... Nobody's getting anything out of that conversation as a human, and I try to think. It's like a closed door. So that's something I stopped doing a few years ago. When people would say, "Like, how are you?" the automatic response is, "Oh, I'm good. I'm fine. Everything's fine. I'm fine. Fine, 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 fine." And it's like, how often is that actually the case? Like, so never. (laughs) uh, So now I'm honest. I'll be like, "Oh, I've had a rough day," or. Oh, it's been okay, but like I dropped a bag of groceries, or you know what I mean. I yeah. try to have a more genuine response, and sometimes I'll still do the automatic. It's yeah. fine. It's good. It's nature, yeah. And then I'll actually stop myself and be like, you know what? No, actually, today fucking sucked. And yeah. then the girl bagging my groceries is like, oh, and she doesn't know what to say, but it doesn't matter because I'm still trying to practice my authenticity. And oftentimes, when you do that, they're like, oh, what happened? It's when you're giving that short form response. It's like a closed door. Yeah. Done. Like if you were to go into a business, done. Yeah. But if you're honest, now you're opening up for that breadth of communication. And it's, it's simple. It's like the breathe thing, it, guys. It, we have mouths. You guys talk. Yeah. Everybody. I, I've heard so many people around me, and I, not you know excluding like social anxiety. Obviously, there's things that a lot of people deal with. Yeah. But I've literally heard people say. I just don't know how to talk to people. Bro, open your mouth. <laughs> like, it sounds funny, yeah. but just... Just to start. You're not going to talk to everybody, but yeah. find find one person a day maybe that you m- maybe wouldn't even never cross paths with. I tell people this, bro. Compliment one stranger a day. Don't even... Don't go looking... Literally go compliment one stranger a day. Quickest way to make friends. People will love you for a lifetime. Just for simple, hey, I love your shoes in the mall. Or I, I love your jacket yes. at, walking in the bar before you sit at a table that's not even in my section. You just know you came into a good place. Like, it's that simple, guys. Just be yourself. Be happy. Be nice. Be transparent. And if you haven't yet, go back to um, season two here, episode two. And I did an episode about ghosting. And so that talks a little bit about those healthy and unhealthy boundaries, like, with setting. So that's, like, a really good episode to kind of prelude this yeah. one. You don't have to go in order when you listen to these at all. Um, it's just going to give you, like, a really kind of well-rounded opinion about that. My well-rounded opinion, because I've been ghosted a million times <laughs> in my life. Um, and <laughs> it feels like crap. And, you know, the thing is, communication is key. You don't have to be, like, a, like... You know how they have, like, introvert and extrovert and ambervert and all the verts, right? Yeah. You don't have to be an extrovert. Sometimes it's just, like, say, keeping things simple 
and being honest, right? Like we there's so often we just forget that we have personalities. And sometimes people have to remind me too. Like um I get really like hyper focused on work and all my endeavors and whatever. And so people have to say, well, what are you doing that's not work related? Because I follow, they follow me on social media, yeah. so they know. <laughs> and I'm like, all oh, right, like, and so <laughs> I need people to pull me back out of that because I get stuck in that mode. Yeah. And I've had to do that with other people too. Be like, okay, I don't want to talk about work, or I don't want to talk about your kids, or <laughs> I don't want to talk about your spouse, or sometimes because we do get hyper focused on these yeah. things. And so some, it's fine for people to say that to you. Yeah. And it's good. And then you can go back to, oh, what kind of books did you read? Or did you see this movie recently? Or let's just go somewhere and sit and look at the water and not do anything. That's my favorite thing. And <laughs> so. Do it at Torch Lake. Oh, Torch Lake. I've never been to Torch Lake. Gotta go. I gotta go. We're going this summer. Come on. Okay, there you go. Torch Lake. Party at Torch. Party at Torch Lake. <laughs> I don't really party anymore. Um, I'm like... Thir- Me either, guys. I was talking like three beers on the sandbar. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm like... I don't even drink. So it's like, can I just have seltzer and can I be in bed at eight? There we go. Um, like, I just want to light some incense, connect to Mother Nature. Like, my partying is very different now than it was at like 20, like topless at a bar. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Um, okay, so... <laughs> I wanted to give some like helpful advice and tips from a dual perspective about the delicate ballet that is adult friendships. So I'm going to be bringing several pieces of wisdom that I've learned throughout my dramatic series of friendships. And both Jacob and I will comment on these statements. So this is like a little bit of like a little rapid fire round. So we want to give our audience a very well-rounded appeal to the topic. Okay, you ready? Yes, ma'am. Here we go. I've found that in both romantic relationships and friendships, if I have an overwhelming appeal to a person, like where it feels like I want to be around them constantly, talk to them constantly, drop plans to be with them, in a sense, like very addicted to that friendship or relationship, it most certainly ends up disastrous 99.9% of the time. I'd say, honestly, pretty fair. Um, At some point, if you... If you really respect that relationship and you want to make it work, you realize that, like, hey, need that space. You know what I mean? Yeah. I get it. So if you're, I mean, generally, you can't spend every second of your day with somebody. You become that person or that person becomes you. And then it's weird because now you're all one giant blob of four fucking Have people. you had that before? Oh, yeah. I've had that yeah. with friendships. I've had that with yeah. lovers. I've had, I've had, it with had that with relationships. Like people yeah. that like really want to work with you. Really, really, like it, it happens in every aspect. Like romantic. And then platonic, they're hitting you up music. ninety times a day. No, literally. Or I've done that too, where I'm like, oh, I really want to hang out with this person. Oh, I really want to hang out with this person. If I start feeling that, I've now had this. I want to say four or five times in my life with just friendships, like yeah. platonic friendships. It is not healthy. And again, it's bad. <laughs> bad, 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 bad. Like, boom. Like, Bro, can you leave me alone? Like, I got a family too. <laughs> right, yeah. And so it's like, if, if definitely, like, if you have that feeling, like, what do you do? Are you, like, able to keep yourself in check or do you just let it run its course? I, this sounds so bad. I prefer chaos. I just let it run its course. So you're, okay, yeah. So you're, like, the same as me. Like, let Pretty it run much. its course. Yeah. Now I'm at the point, though. So I can though, learn my lessons. I prefer to learn my lessons in, in the hard way. I'm at the point now where I've really recognized that pattern, though. And I'm, like, if I feel that with somebody, I instantly am, like, yeah. no. Do not go there. Do not engage. Let them live their life. Don't touch me. I'm clean. Curse. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like the curse, right? So now it's like I have it. I've now failed at that so many times that now I've got it in check. <laughs> I've got it in check. We're okay, guys. We got We're them. okay. All right. Next one. Social media can be helpful for friendships that are long distant or hard to maintain, but overall can be a crutch for actually maintaining in-person friendships or connections. Ooh. I'm going to be a fucking bear of bad news for people on this one. I love social media. Yeah. I think it's a fucking tool. Um, I think, so, I, I mean, I guess, yeah, there's definitely those negatives. Like, there's definitely, like, it can break down certain, but, like, 
I tell you right now, bro, I don't talk to some of my best friends for like weeks on end. Mm -hmm. And I only get to talk, like, I have a best friend. He's, he lives in Mexico. I, don't, I can't call him on the phone. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I could on WhatsApp or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But like, we just call on Facebook Messenger. You know what I'm saying? Like, before WhatsApp and stuff like that, but that's, that's what I have, like. Okay, but go back. So, like I said, it's great for hard to maintain or long distance. But let's talk about the people that you actually can see. Oh. Are you using social media as a substitute for actually in person connections? Luckily, not me. Okay. I mean, you've been around my circle, so, like, honestly, like, uh, I, I think I, I do a good dude. I mean, I, that's just out of my personal end, like, at least I do a good due diligence of, like, understanding that, like, social media is fun and all, but, like, I love to be with my people, like, so I make it a point, like, I, I call my people on the phone. Do you have day. to be the one to make the effort, or do Don't, other people make it with you, nah, or it's mutual? You gotta yeah, get mutual so, I mean, like, I mean, like, I, I obviously I'll say at times... You know, there's always that, you know, somebody might be more busy, but, like, no, nah, I'd say, like, if there's a time when, like, I haven't called in a couple of days, like, I'd say, I mean, you know, Matt Morsa, Morsa, me talk every day. I mean, I'm most of me and my boys talk every day. Yeah. And like, it's generally, like, I, I, and I'm blessed with that. I know that, like, not everybody has that situation, but uh, I think because I learned that lesson with social media a couple of years ago, like, uh, like, when I went to college, I think it was, it was, like, the first learner the lesson for me is, like, I was when Instagram was first popping and everybody was first on that, wouldn't even text at times. People would DM and Snapchat, you know what I mean, instead of text. And so, like, when I've never start, had a Snapchat, by the way. Really? Yeah, I, like, downloaded it, and there was all those little stupid cartoons on it. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you got rid of it? Like, who the fuck is doing this? And then I deleted it instantly. <laughs> I was like, I couldn't believe that someone even invited me to that. I was, like, insulted. <laughs> What the fuck is this fake sim shit? I'm like, I don't want... Why would I cre spend three hours creating a cartoon of myself when you make it just Guys, a picture? Guys, she's roasting me because I have the most fire bit on the on Snapchat. <laughs> I'm so mad right now. I've never seen it, but still. Oh my goodness. Just saying. I was like, why the fuck would I do this? Like, no, but I've yeah. Been I think that... <laughs> but there's, like, 10 years uh, difference between nah, us. Okay, that's there's, true. like, that's 10 fair. That's fair. years difference. So I you're, like... I high school when Snapchat popped. I don't even... Yeah, because, like, people were kind of... In the most respectful way, I see him so fucked up. <laughs> you fucking old lady. She's a high school lady. I know. I was, like... I'm, like, what is everybody wasting their time on this? Or I just, like... I could never get into that. And that's I'm why I'm, like, like, I don't like... I don't like TikTok. We're totally no. on topic, guys, but I hope you enjoy this. this yeah, I hate TikTok. Like, I just... No, it's just there's certain things that but, okay well, let's circle, no, back. No, circle. No, and we, that's what i was going to <laughs> what we were about to say is like no but that's the funny part is like uh even with like snapchat like yeah. that i think is like one of the weird crushes i think that just takes away texting and calling people okay. do that a lot more because it seems quicker but like I, I i got to a point where like when i went to college none of my homies really like called me on the phone and then at one point i broke they would like hit me up we would talk on instagram snapchat more and then at one point i broke my phone mm. So at one point it was like kind of annoying, but then I broke my phone. The only way I could communicate was Facebook, Snapchat, excuse yeah. me, burps, guys. Um, he was drinking McDonald's, which I don't endorse. I'm sorry, don't drink yeah. Coke. We don't endorse them. No. Um, so I got to a point where literally that was the only way I could communicate. I mean, even with my own parents, the only way I could message was on Messenger when oh, I had Wi-Fi okay. at home. So I guess I gained a little bit of respect for it and, and just yeah. due to my life circumstances. And then because of that, I also gained the respect of... Wow, I love when somebody calls my phone, and so you can hear. Uh, I mean, I it, I probably started it with my homies, but I started calling my homies like when I got back from college. I started calling my people all the time because I was like, I love talking on the phone, so driving trucks. I just call my people all day. Hey, yeah. uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? What, you know, what, what are you up to? Even if I'm just sitting at home and I'm bored, smoking or something, I'm like, yo, what are you doing? You want to come smoke? You want to talk on phone? I was bullshit about the day. Um, so, firstly, for me, I mean, I don't think it's uh, been a crutch for me, but I definitely do see. And as a crutch for other people, yeah. I definitely have seen, like, specifically seen it for other people, like, actually decimate, like, whole friendships and, like, whole business relationships just because, like, using it just, like, like, losing, sh you can lose, like, business deals and all that, trying to not be personal and call a phone or something, you know, trying to work through DMs. Like, I always say this in the fashion industry, if you're a model, you're a designer, and I tell you to hit us up, don't shoot us a DM, our email is public, shoot us an email, shoot us something that's going to stick out, we're going to see it, and that's how I... And so much context is lost yeah. when it's only, like, a DM or an Instagram or a message, yeah. because there's no facial expressions, yeah. there's no vocal tone. Like, even I would say, like, um, like if I'm driving and people are, like, messaging me on, like, yeah. Facebook Messenger, I'll, like, leave them even voice messages. If yeah. I want to get, like, more of a point across or mm -hmm. I want to be more curious... 
Um, it's like even just that little step of doing a voice message. And yeah. I think it was like um, the co-founder of the Frindo Wellness Fair. She was she uses that a lot. And yeah. I was like, I need to start using that yeah. more because I like really liked hearing the People's inflections voice, yeah. in the voice. And, you know, I mean, obviously I have a podcast. So I like yeah. that. But, <laughs> um, you know, I think that it's just like a personalized yeah. tone. It's not so sterile. It's like a, I like those. It's, it's almost like you can have a signature text. Like we were yeah. that back in the day. Yeah. Instead of the line at the bottom, we the little docu sign signature. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Okay, <laughs> trying new things or groups, even ones I'm intimidated by, has been paramount in obtaining the amazing circle of friendships I have now. Absolutely, peoples. Get out of your. I, I just said this earlier. Stop trying to be everybody else, but at the yeah. same time, get out of your comfort zone. If you do see something that like is on something else, or you think you want to rock that, rock that shit. Go out and find something similar. Literally, I say, my my whole circle changed like this last year. Yeah. I mean, through and through, even the circle that I had when I started and when I met Jessica was completely through and through different than even the circle I have now. It's only been like six months. Professionally, and I mean, yeah, it's literally been like yeah. six, eight months. And so I say this, get out of your box. Yeah. Jump out of it, kick that bitch open, rip it apart. And however you take it to a demo room, however you want to break it open, go put your foot in the door in a room that they wouldn't expect you in. You know, I was a photographer and I literally was a model because I come in on a post. It was like, hey, this is on my birthday. Any chance I could walk? Yeah, I walk. Now I'm a model. Like, you know, I, I didn't practice. I didn't train. I was like, yo, let me try some new stuff. And it worked out just because of a leap of faith. I say this. Uh, I'm a more proponent of this than anybody. If you don't change and you don't do some new shit, you're going to stay stagnant forever. I'll say this. I've been through probably like 12 different careers. I've done like flood and fire restoration. I've driven trucks. I've worked at Panera and Wendy's. I've uh, service assistant at country clubs. I've been a phone sales assistant. I've done demolition. I've done roofing. I've you know I've done I've ran a huge gamut of stuff. I'm now a photographer, videographer, model. All these things kept coming because I was bored. I wanted more. It, it, the circles were the same. I got bored of the circles. It wasn't progressing my life. It wasn't giving me a better future. So yeah, you stay with that same circle. Yeah, you wanna you wanna definitely have a. Uh, I'll say this: you wanna really find five. I think five is a good number. You need people you can have in your right hand, or if you're left handed, your left hand. You need a right hand or a left hand group of people. Other than that, like I have an expansive network. People always ask me like, how do you know all these people? Like. Cause I'm not scared to go out in public and wear a pink jacket and say, what's up, motherfuckers? Let's do some shit. Have some fun and lean backwards on chairs and rip makeup off our face. You know what I mean? So, yeah, definitely get out of the box. It's it's the best thing in the world, I think, for anybody. And it's the scariest shit in the world, 100%. But the day I jumped out of the box is the day I never looked back. So do that shit for sure. Even if it's just once. Just once. like Just once. Because that once is going to... Change your life. That's all it is. It takes Change once, and I tell people that you, you do that one out-of-box thing one time, and it, it generally, like, I, we are both, like, a cerebral, universal type people, so, like, it, it's a different type of feeling, I tell you that. Like, the first time, even, I'll say this, it's even better a feeling when somebody, you, you see the respect you get from people from doing something different, because 98% of our society in the world is so caught up in, in tabloids and TMZ. And, and bullshit. And what the fuck Kanye's doing designer-wise or whatever the hell's going on in mm -hmm. the industry. You know, whatever industry it might be. And there's a lot of stuff that goes on that we pay attention to. And we're so scared to do those things ourselves, but we idolize them. And, and you know, we, we watch the Met Gala and we watch all these fashion oh. weeks and we do all this stuff oh because God. we love what they have on. And we're like, I like wish I could. Yeah. Like Sis's headpiece. Woo! Oh, yeah. Killed it. Um, mm -hmm. But, like, literally, that's, you know, we idolize all these people, guys. We are those people. Those people yeah. were us. Literally, all they did was jump out the box and, and really do what the hell they wanted to do and made it. And one of the things, I think I got a psychic reading recently. I don't remember what it was, but um, my brain is soup. <laughs> I They were telling me that... Like, one of the things I've always felt is I'm meant for something great, right? And so I feel like I'm always on the press of it. Oh, I was in a fire starters group. That's not like actual fire starting. But Sorry, it's, brain soup. Yeah, da Danielle Laporte <laughs> has a group called Fire Starters, and I do it through the Serendipitous Soul. And anyways, so I said I always feel like I'm, like, on the precipice of something great, right? But, like, why is what I'm doing not what's actually great? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I we have such a weird definition of getting to a certain point of success. Yeah. And it's like, I look at my life now compared to where it's been. Yeah. And I'm like, 
dude, you are successful no, and you're doing <laughs> fucking great ass <laughs> shit. Like, you know what I mean? And you have to do that by trying new things. Yeah. All 100%. the time. And that's the other thing. You're going to fail when you try new things. And I, I'm a huge proponent, bro. I take my L's with a smile on my face. Yeah. You're going to lose in life. We all do. You're never going to win everything. Nobody. And we're all going to die. So you clearly nobody wins. I have an itchy <laughs> nose. So anyone that's watching this is like, why is she like pushing her nose? It's because my nose itches. She's just, her brain soup. She's just stuff in the my soup brain from soup. out. <laughs> like, what's that old wives tale? Like, you're going to kiss the fool? I don't think my husband liked that very much, but... I don't know. I mean... I'm 25, I don't know. Because either... Cause either you, don't, you don't know those old wives' tales? There's so many old wives' tales. No. Okay. So, an old wives' tale. We're totally getting off the topic, but that's okay. An old wives' tale... You guys tale, get the full spectrum of me and Jess. We go way off topic. Old wives' tale is, like, something people have said forever. Oh. Okay? So, it's like, um, if your palms itch, you're going to come into money... If you're like ears if you are spill salt, seven years of bad luck type shit. That's yeah, well, it's more of a superstition. Like if your ears are itching <laughs> or burning and oh, someone's okay, so talking like, about you, and if your nose itches, it's you're gonna kiss a fool. Do people's knees actually hurt when it rains, or is that a wife's tale? That's arthritis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if that was a real thing. Moving. My knees just hurt in general. No, my knees hurt, but I have arthritis. Okay, moving on. Um, okay, you don't have to be a bitch to let a friendship go or ghost them. You can phase someone out of your life, but if you actually want to keep that friendship, try setting a boundary first, and then based on that conversation and follow-up action, you can make some more intuitive decisions. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely a... I, get, I say this, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on me again, like... I give everybody a chance or two, like, you know what I mean? Like you said earlier, um, everybody deserves, you know, chances to make mistakes. And I think that's one of the biggest things with society is we as humans are so hell-bent on not making mistakes, but it's literally what connects us as humans the most. It's literally how we've got to society. That's how scientific discoveries were made. That's how fucking, dude... I don't, I'm not even going to say I was going to say something really stupid on camera. I'm not going to say that don't question. Don't say things <laughs> stupid on camera. It was a dumb question. I should know this. I'm not going to say it. Oh, Lord. But like... Soup. Brain soup. <laughs> yeah, literally brain soup. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like that you... you <laughs> no, I know I did. This is how it was. was, was so right? Brain soup. <laughs> brain. Beep. Beep. <laughs> <laughs> it was instinctive because you've been doing this. Yeah, before. I've been trying. For those of you that are just audio listening, he said brain soup and touched his nose because we were talking about the old wives' tales. So it's not. Um, that's how, and that's how old wives' tales happen, right? You just say something and then do something with the body part, and that's the old wives' tale. So. But yeah, I mean, uh, I definitely say like. It's important, you know, you give people those boundaries. I mean, as adults, you know, as kids, it's hard, you don't even know your own boundaries. But as an adult, you should be responsible enough to say, hey, I do appreciate your, you know, value your friendship. But, like, this is something that you do that frustrates me. Or this is something that we need to get through or get over before we can continue our friendship in the same manner. Um, And if that's a true friendship, I've seen it happen. If it's a true friendship, even a grown man would say, you know what, you're right. Like, let me, let me, let me dial back from that boundary I overstepped. Let's talk about it. Um, And it's that simple. If somebody simply can't, listen to your emotions accept that that's what you feel as a human and that's what you want then from there you can reevaluate because at that point what other decisions are they not respecting yours what other things do or know what other things are they not aligned with with your vision or your morals or whatever it might be because it's, if it's a simple one boundary thing and they can't respect that then yeah but uh I'm just still not a huge fan of the ghost thing for sure I definitely think that no like phasing even out is hard to like I'm more of a friend that says, hey, I don't want to be friends no more. Like, I'm good. Just don't hit me up no more. You know what I mean? It's not, it doesn't have, like you said, you don't have to be a bitch, but you can just respectfully say, hey, like, we're adults this and I don't think this friendship me. is is working for me and it's no hard feelings. I wish you the best of luck. I've had it. I have had to do it with plenty of friends like, hey, I'm cool, but I wish you the best of luck. But like, you're not somebody I want to kick it with. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? And it's because everybody grows, everybody aligns. So you, not only do you have to kind of like do that boundary thing, like we kind of don't have a choice because as you get older, like new things develop and And I really just try to say certain things like that I want like we were talking about the thing with work yeah I'm gonna keep itching my nose here it's just (laughs) happening but um like we were talking about like the thing with work right where so people have to say okay can we not talk about your work or I don't want to talk about this or I do want to talk about this like sometimes it's just as gentle as that so because we all have something that we're really stuck on like say maybe you're going through divorce and it's like all you're going to talk about right so we just say okay like 
Let's talk about something besides your divorce, because yeah. I feel like you're really hyper focused on that. And honestly, it's good to say that to yeah. people because people get stuck in their own shit. They get stuck in survival mode. If you you know listen to the last episode, like, and so it helps to have somebody kind of redirect us or just set up something that they're not comfortable talking right. about, right? Like maybe you have a friend that's not comfortable talking about religion or politics. Like in my house, we have a no politics rule. Um, <laughs> so I mean, it's just like there's enough of that out there. Yeah. I just don't want it, you right. know. So it's like and we got to deal with that stuff on a daily. Yeah. Like, let's talk about stuff that's gonna make us connect more on a human level. Yeah. Like, and th- like you said, it's so simple boundaries. Like just knowing how to in a simple conversation. Like if you can simply say stuff in everyday conversation, it makes those at times because obviously bigger boundaries get overstepped throughout your lifetime it makes those times when those bigger boundaries for you are overstepped it it, starting with those little ones it makes it so much easier that when somebody does cross that bigger boundary you already have kind of like a a mental muscle memory of how to react to this situation and and not you know blow it up essentially Mm -hmm. so you don't have to have one best friend no ma'am no ma'am guys we are not in elementary school anymore fuck that shit I have like g- like a group of girls Wait, I talk to I all the know. time called my besties. I, lied, guys. I have I don't know. a best <laughs> friend. I have a business bestie or twelve. I, I, there's a like a lot that. of because there's like okay, like I'm gonna say like you don't yeah I'm gonna say you don't have, to have one best friend because it's like there's but it is okay if you have one. It is totally okay if you only it's okay if you have one but you don't have to. Yeah, essentially. I think the thing is it's like a lot of responsibility for one person to have all to have to wear all those hats for yeah. you. Cuz as an adult our needs get more complex mm-hmm. too. And so then all of a sudden it's like really hard to expect one friend to like be at your back and call. Answer every phone call, yeah. every text yeah. message, every DM. Know how to raise your kids. Know how to help you run your business. It's just like there's so many different things. Spending that we much need. time answering the phone, and if you're there, the only friend, and you guys are literally just sitting on the phone. In that point, just move in. You guys should solve our issues. <laughs> right, it might be a little codependent. I mean, now granted, when you're retired and you want a Golden Girls, that like sure, but even that was yeah, not I just mean, one best friend. Yeah, there's three. Yeah, right? so I mean, I yeah, I watch Golden Girls. I guess. Well, it's four total. So yeah, three, yeah, three. three best friends. Yes. Yeah. Golden Girls trivia. Mr. Rogers got it. Mr. Rogers got it. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, you don't have to have one. But if you do, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've always had, I mean, I've had a core group, like I said, of five best friends my whole life. Mm-hmm. I mean, not my whole life. I've had two that were, one was fourth grade, the other one I met in sixth grade, the other, the other three were high school, or mid, like, and a middle school, high school. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, like, I've always had a very expansive group of friends. And I won't even say an expansive group of best friends, but now I can generally say I have about, like, 10 to 15 people that I can consider genuine, like, best friends. Like, and I guess I wouldn't even say that, like, to me, like, the term best friends to me is odd. Um, and the way I grew up, we didn't use the term friends when we cared about people. And that's the way I still operate. If you're somebody that I generally care about, I don't care if I've known you for three months, just as family, my other friends, it's all family. So uh, I think best friend is a term, honestly, people should throw out because, like, what is a best friend? And I say that with a... Listen to that term, best friend. That sounds like you're judging your friends. Yeah. And it, 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 it's got an inherent <laughs> tone. Like, and that's this weird thing about vocabulary, right? We, if we even said things about certain relationships or friendships or whatever, and we spoke about them differently, it would kind of change the way we looked at things and the way we judged and viewed and, and corrected stuff. Like, what is a best friend? Oh, he's my best friend today because he answered the phone. Well, he's a better friend tomorrow because he answered the phone gave me a ride home and right what's the criteria so like, so like to me i just i say hey i have a solid ass group of people and i know that i have good people surrounded by me and i say that's the best thing you say in life as long as you can generally wake up every morning and you can look in the mirror and go i got a good ass group of people around me i think that's what's important it, mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be a set number if your big ass group is three people your big ass group is three people if your big ass group is 35 people that's your big ass group but don't be scared to have a bigger group of just one person because, like Jess said, you're going to get into an area with just, like, it's even just like a relationship, like it's a, a, a non-toxic relationship or like a toxic relationship. Like, it's not going to work. You're going to be stuck with that person. You guys, is, your morals are going to be essentially the same because you're going to be together all the time and that just doesn't work. Okay. And our last, like, tidbit, tip, however you want to say it. Tidbit. No, that tidbit doesn't sound right. That sounds like yeah, you part said, of your boob. You said tidbit. That yeah. sounds like a 
hell of a good Tim Hortons promotion, if you ask me. We're not endorsing <laughs> no, them either. Don't, no, nothing we're saying is, Tim is being endorsed. No, no, no. <laughs> so have friends for certain roles in your life. And so I want to circle back to that. So, like, especially with the best friend thing, I think that actually ties in really well. So, like... Don't ex- like don't necessarily expect your non mom friends or non dad friends to understand that position if you have kids. Right. If you if you run your own business, I was having this discussion today. If you run your own business, your friends that are going to like a forty hour nine to five are probably not going to understand <laughs> when you're crying in your closet. <laughs> like, um, like I've done that, guys. That's not even a joke. We I've do done that. It. I've done it. This I have week. a nice closet though. Don't worry. Yeah, I've done it this week. I mean, like, those are things. Everyone has different facets of their life. And you're going to need to have people in those facets and in those roles. I always make this joke, but, like, it. this is, I mean, because this is, a, honestly, this one here is always, it's always a social media debate all the time. It's like, for example, bro, if you're in a long-term relationship, seven, eight years, yeah. and you're going through some shit, you're not going to go to your homie that's got, like, four baby mamas and, like, has no relationship and be like, yo, bro. I need advice. How do I say my shit with my girl? Like, you're not <laughs> going to do that shit. Like, you're not going to go to the cashier at McDonald's. No. And, like, he might know. But, like, theoretically, if you're going to go out in the public, you're not going to go ask the cashier at McDonald's how to make a million fucking dollars. You're going to go ask the CEO of fucking McDonald's. Like, you want to. And it's not necessarily. We're not endorsing McDonald's. No, not at all. They're cooked, maybe burnt. Uh, fuck. Brain soup. Brain soup. And you touched your nose. Oh, my God. Um, Old boys' like, tales. It's not... I wouldn't say it's necessarily, like, assigning friends, but, like, it's like it's more just deciphering and knowing, like, what to talk about with who. And it, mm-hmm. it's not even just your friends, but it's in public. Like I said, be transparent, but also know what not to talk about in public and when and, you know, yeah. things like that. But if you know you have a friend that, you know... Let's say, for example, I have a specific friend that I talk to... I won't even say his name on here because I don't do personal business, but I have another father or, or a friend of mine that same father situation as mine. Same, mm-hmm. like, and this is our biggest bonding point. A couple of other my friends, they don't have that situation. They're great. They have great fathers. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I'm not going to go sit there and, and go talk to a kid whose dad's been there, and, you know, and be like, yo, bro, I miss my dad. <laughs> like, because he's going to be like, that's the difference. Because he's going to be like, yo. No, I, that's the difference between, and I think this is important. For you to recognize the difference between sympathy and empathy. empathy yeah. Like, because, like, I guess you're, yeah. for example, it's like I had great parents. Yeah. I had amazing, why well, I have, they're, you know, both alive, they're yeah. both together. I, I have, it's something I'm really, really blessed with. So I can, like, sympathize, yeah. but I can't empathize. empathize and sometimes you need that And empathy, sometimes yeah. you need the empathy. And empathy yeah. isn't always, like, emotional in a sad way. Like, empathy yeah. is, can be, like, good thing. Like, hey, I, like, hey, I been to Cancun like where are you going to Cancun I've been there or like yeah yeah that's simple Cancun right too that's it um okay so hopefully some of these tips and weird adages and odd things where we're touching our nose um have helped you form new longer lasting friendships but ones that really feel good to your soul and I think that's the most important thing a friendship is worth having it's worth keeping it's worth trying to invest into if it feels good if it makes you when you think of it you're not thinking oh god like responsibility or burden or whatever but you're like oh no i like genuinely want to see that person your friendship you know friendship's great like when you express gratitude they express gratitude back like things are reciprocated those are the things that you know are worth like being friends for worth fighting for it's the same thing with relationships anything business it's the same thing in every aspect you just got to learn how to change your vocab for whatever scenario we're speaking about Fostering connections can help so much in your mental health, and having people you can talk to about anything and everything is very healing. So we'd love to hear from you. Tell us what works for you or where you're struggling, and it would be our joy to help you guys out. So, Jacob, tell people how they can connect with you directly on social media. One more time. All right. One more so, time. So, Instagrams, uh, my modeling media page, or sorry, my modeling and like my personal page, BTS, all this cool stuff, all the other stuff I do in my daily life is J S I D O C K 45. Disclaimer with that one, that's also my personal page. Uh, we talk a lot about mental health on here. If anybody out there is struggling or you resonated with this episode, you had any more questions, feel free to reach out to me on social yes. media. Um, I extend this anytime I'm on a, a, a platform of any time I get to use my voice, please reach out. I have friends um, I've never met in person, and they, I, I completely 
validate them as friends. Yeah. So mm-hmm. feel free to reach out. I love connecting with new people. I love making new friends. I would love to help anybody that struggles with it. Um, definitely get a hold of me. Um, my media page on Instagram is J the Photographer Forty Five. Um, that's all my media and my fashion industry stuff that I do with Phoenix Flames. Um, follow them on Instagram, Phoenix Flames Co. And Facebook, you can just do my first and last name, which uh, will be posted in the show notes for this. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Facebook, it is just Cracked Lens Media. Uh, again, that's just my media page on there. Um, and you can stay tuned for on that page. I'm going to be posting a lot more, getting ready to drop our website and everything on there. So uh, give me a follow. Thanks, Jess, for letting me come on yes. again. And guys, if you don't go vote for our Detroit for Breathe Ferndale, when survival looks like success. Yep. And what's the third one? Coterie Detroit. Coterie Detroit. And me, Jessica yeah. York. I'm on oh, so too. four, right? I, it's, yeah, it's like five category, one, two, three, four, five, six categories. You heard that. Yeah. Six. She's six. the six god, guys. Go yeah. vote six times each category. Mm-hmm. Love it. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at When Survival Looks Like Success. And... Take care, my friends, and I mean that.